Hey, Robin. How's it going, brother? It's going super well. I was about to thank that lady for letting us know that the recording is beginning. <laughs> yes, so awesome our, our... to have, uh, yeah, that lady there as we uh, begin. Things are going well, man. How's the uh, last few days and last week been for you? Been good, man. Been good. It's, uh, I was just trying to think before we jumped on, I'm like, what have I done in the last week or so? <laughs> um, I don't know, you know, same old, same old, really, man. We, uh, we had that great chat with uh, the Carbon Conversations last week, which was fun. So I um, really enjoyed that and our, our SO Beer Boys chat. But I think it was mostly just chill time, man. How about you? Yeah, it was just decompressing from work. I, you know, I, I hate to talk about work, but I think there's been a lot of decompressing lately after work. So it's just about, you know, just shutting down a little bit, relaxing, Yep. Catching up on some Netflix shows I'm probably behind on, but uh, that's about it. Not too much more than that. Even in terms yeah. of beers, I can't say it, I, I tried anything too special, but I will throw out a shout out to Nickelbrook for shooting over uh, some beers with the new branding that they have. It looks friggin' yeah. incredible. Um, the headstock branding, I thought that looked kind of cool. Like I was always a big fan of that wild looking can, but because mm-hmm. uh, it was just easy to know. You go there and you're like, all right, LCBO, this is the one. But uh, it, it's probably the first rebrand i've seen that's that big for a long long time and i know even headstock yeah. did already go through a rebrand it was that original crazy looking can yeah and they had that other one that they moved to the guitar this, head like, yeah the guitar head you got it you got it so yeah it's, it's i'm cool. looking forward to yeah i got the package coming up and it's a cool rebrand they did it's uh yeah. it's nice to see when you you know it's it's you got catches the eye again it's like when we had them on uh back Oh God, forever ago now when they first told Every us about the year. rebrand. Jeez, it <laughs> feels that? like that long ago. Yeah. I don't know. At the beginning uh, of the rebrand when they when they yeah. when they jumped on. And um it was really cool just to to learn about the ideas that went behind it and to to see these brands that are forever in your mind. You know what I mean? Like you always remember those kick cans. So when something changes, it's a big, it's a big thing. Right. When a, when a label changes, a big mm-hmm. change like that. So yeah, that's awesome. And I actually will mention. I did try another smoothie beer. Okay, who's it? Um, you sent it to me. It was uh, the Bandit one. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> right? You're like, what did I say? <laughs> Wait, I thought maybe another one after that. <laughs> no, I don't think. Did we talk about it on the last show? I don't think we did. Oh, I don't maybe we know did. if we did. I thought I we did, know. but okay. Well, I mean, I, for anybody that didn't hear it, tell them about it. So I'll, before you jump into it, I'll say it was called Yo-Yo by Bandit. That one yeah. is a raspberry, vanilla, marshmallow, and I feel <laughs> like I'm dropping one ingredient. Guava. Right? Some, oh, was it guava? Okay, yeah, I go. think so. Or passion fruit, <laughs> one of the two. <laughs> what do you think? 601 um i i tried it that's all i would say man it definitely i got well i got in trouble by posting a picture um i i did pour out half of it i couldn't get through it it was a little too chunky for ryan um you were actually having a beer with our buddy kevin shout out to ontario craft beer lover and uh, I guess he he coincidentally shared the picture to Linda, who got <laughs> Linda who got a little uh, discontent with my drain she, pour. So <laughs> she she was uh, a little bit unimpressed. But on that note, she realized mm-hmm. that you know, and this is this is a good thing as well, brother. Is that she realized not everybody likes those beers, right? Like they're and 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 fact is that she had bought some for other people, and then she kind of thought like you know what, maybe everybody doesn't like this beer the way I like this beer, right? Mm-hmm. And on that note, you uh, helped her keep more beers. So she <laughs> did end up keeping those ones and enjoyed them. <laughs> so it's I like, mean, heck, you know. The flavor was good. That like, yeah. if, you know, if that flavor could be in just a standard kettled sour or something, yeah. then I would be game all the time. Yeah. Throw marshmallows in that shit if you want. But it was just yeah, good. I, orbits, right? That's what I liked it too, orbits. I don't know, Ryan, though, to be honest, what the chunkiness came from. Like, I was kind of n- trying to understand if it was maybe leftover bits of marshmallow that made it through, or if it was maybe clumps of raspberry puree that had made it through. Yeah. Um, because I was getting seeds in it. So, I mean, seeds definitely, too, yeah. you know, de- definitely some some fruit, but I don't know where the chunkiness came from. That was yeah. different. <laughs> I mean, I didn't expect that. <laughs> I think I'll try them once every six months and just see how they Good progress. Call. And, you know, like I, I didn't mind the taste of it. It's definitely better tasting than the first one I had. There's um, five paddles has a pumpkin one. Yeah. Um, Jump the nine mile shark. It's called, Ooh. Um, or no, what's it called here? I wrote it down. It's an interesting name and it's caught my eye just because of the color of it. And I'm a huge pumpkin fan, of course, based on even tonight's show, but um, what's it called? Jump the pumpkin shark nine whatever that means um that kind of fun <laughs> gorgeous looking smoothie it looks like yeah. carrot juice or something man like 
but when do you think the first vegetable smoothie? Well, I guess that would be it. Up? That would probably be it. Okay? That's it. Yeah. No, they, well, they'd probably be the pumpkin one, right? Pumpkin, oh, pumpkin's a gourd. Oh yeah, pumpkin's a gourd. You are right. So you are right. Technically, yeah. 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 Now, I'm waiting for the beets. That's what I'm waiting for. Or kale, somebody crazy getting in there with kale and making it green. Kale. Well, beets. <laughs> I did have a beets one. I, I remember I mentioned this to you a long yeah. time ago. It was like a a beet with ale, a like bar? a beet pale ale. No, it was a beet oh, just pale beet. ale. Yeah, and it was like an old Westie, but with beets in it, and the beets just added a nice earthiness that went along with the malt, and I, I, I didn't mind that. it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I could I could see beets being real good because they do have, especially if you cook them, they have a nice caramelization in it. Uh, really changes the overall profile of that. But I'm sure that that, in your case, they might've used it raw. I mean, rarely well, ever is somebody gonna mess with cooked beets in a beer. No, exactly. But I think they do have, like, I know, cause Mark got honorable mention, shout out to Mark at Up North Brewing. Oh, um, he got honorable awesome. mention for his dill pickle beer in the yeah. um, vegetable and herb category. <laughs> so I guess there is one in there, right? Like for yeah. spices and herbs. Yeah. And yeah. that was a wonderful beer too, man. Absolutely beautiful drinking beer. Well, I didn't get a chance to try it, but uh, definitely congratulations to him and job well done. Eh? Uh, you know, through our conversation with him, one thing that I took away and through the you know Indigenous Brew Day conversation is that he is an incredibly talented individual. He really mm -hmm. knows his beer. So I can imagine that that was wild. And, uh, I, you know, I did also have a chance to sample some of this stuff with you when I came over to your place. Just so good. So good. Yeah, absolutely. And that, and the quad, he made one gold, I think, too. And that's a gorgeous beer, too. So sitting in the cellar for Christmas. Yeah, I can't wait to try that. That'll be great. Speaking of beer, we have the Great Pumpkin Showdown. Down, 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 down. <laughs> so um, on this episode, we wanted to go through... You know, last year we talked about pumpkin beers, and I think maybe we had one with it. Um, yeah. This year we wanted to rate um, four of the easily accessible LCBO pumpkin beers. Yeah, and one or of, you know, I think one of the debatably most stigmatized beers of the year that we get to see, you know, is either some people like, are like, oh, it's that season again. And other mm -hmm. people like me are like, all right, it's that season again. I'm kind of excited to see what's going to be out there. So uh, let's see how these turn out, man. Yeah, and you're right too, right? It's one of those uh, another debatable styles, but I think that's the beauty of our beer world, right? You know, yeah. people love stuff that people hate and that's the way <laughs> it's always going to be. So we got room for everything, like pumpkin true. beer. So why don't uh, you tell us what we got today? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we, as Ryan mentioned, we chose four of the LCBO available beers. Um, obviously, there's a ton of different pumpkin beers that are out there. First one is the one Ryan's trying to highlight there, which is Great Lakes Brewery's Pumpkin Ale. Um, th this is kind of a classic one. I'm sure that they've revised the recipe as the years have gone on, but this is a really, really well-known one. Mm -hmm. um, the next one that you've got there is uh, Lake of Bay's Pumpkin Ale. Um, this one, I'm a little bit less familiar with, Ryan. Um, do you yeah, know same. how many years they've been kind of running this one for by chance? It's been a few. I'd like to say maybe four or five, but I'm also, it's one of the ones that hasn't made it into my pumpkin rotational lineup as often. <laughs> Fair enough. Same, same goes. Um, next up, we've got uh, Flying Monkeys Theater of Madness. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. This is their first year running this one. Uh, normally, it's the uh, paranormal uh, or paranormal. No, paranormal. Uh, paranormal, yeah. That that one is their standard one, but this imperial is the pumpkin release. ale. That paranormal is like that's that my last favorite. year was oh yeah. too good. You could throw some whipped cream on that legitimately. <laughs> you told me good. Um, this one is again one of the ones that's a bit of a classic now. Um, Big rigs, tales from the patch. <clears throat> Uh, I will say that the, I think anybody who's seen the can has noticed that it's gone through some changes as the years have gone on. Uh, mm -hmm. This year's revision has uh, uh, a very notable uh, mention, which is a glowing background to the can. Um, I, we will take a look later to see if it does work for us. I, Catch I, and light. I, yeah, I, I won't say anything just yet on my thoughts on it, but I'll say let's see how it works and then I'll share my thoughts on it later. Yeah, you know, it's it's I it's, we will share our thoughts on it. It's gonna yeah. get it's gonna capture light once we get to it. It'll be dark outside. We'll turn the lights off and uh, we'll yeah. see how she, we'll see if she glows. How does she glow? So yeah, we're gonna start off with uh, Robin and I decided we're gonna kind of go light to dark too. Um, the 
you know, I, I have sampled three of these four this year. So I might have a little <laughs> bit of a, a head start on Robin because as soon as I see the pumpkin beers, I am like that, you know, it's like pumpkin spice coffee. I don't like pumpkin spice coffee, but <laughs> I'll line up for the pumpkin spice beers as soon as they launch. Um, so we're, we'll start with Great Lakes Brewery. So Great Lakes Brewery Pumpkin Ale, um, this year has been brewed with a generous amount of locally grown pumpkin with some subtle additions of cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, and allspice. Um, they say that it results in a smooth, well-rounded, and slightly spicy ale, perfectly seasoned for suitable harvest fare. So that is, oh, the green screen works. Let's see if I can get the pumpkin in the green screen. There we go. Oh, well, Robin's already poured. Oh, I'm behind here. I'm just enjoying the look of the glass. <laughs> well, I thought I'd give the, the listeners a little ASMR on that as you were speaking, because they could there listen to that uh, crack open. All right. So this thing pours beautifully, kind of light in color. Mm -hmm. nice head it almost seems a bit darker than last year's version i i could see that i could certainly see that right and i just i remember this one being in bottles at one point in time am i remembering right many years yeah well not even many years ago i'd say even probably like four or five years ago that was in bottles yeah because this oh, and okay. saison du pump came in bottles right okay that was the other one that was in the bottle saison mm. du pump. wow i mean can't wait on that one that's not get the you get, you get some clove. of the get a little clove on the nose. You definitely get the you get you get the ale through, like you get the beer through there, which I do like. Oh yeah. Sometimes it can be overpowering. Wait, that almost tends like it, you know the malts almost give it a bit of I want to say molasses that kind of plays off some of the clove and the smell there. Mm hmm. Hmm. Mm. Ooh. That like tastes that. like a gingerbread cookie. Almost, eh? Yeah, it does have some <laughs> of that dark molasses. Mm. So I I like how you still get the beer, though. Like, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. on, the, on the flavor, too, I think it's important to still get those traditional flavors. Yes. Um, and Great, great Lakes Brewery has always done a great job uh, making sure that it stays you know balances a nice line between you know that pumpkin and the beer and you still get to enjoy the beer that they're well known for as well yeah i mean starting starting with the beer you're absolutely right it's it's just fantastic so they've got a good base they're going with and the reason why to me it tastes i think so much like a ginger molasses cookie is that you know all of those those flavors that i'm thinking are like cinnamon clove nutmeg, nutmeg yeah. you mm -hmm. know i mean not that there's actual ginger in this but those are you know those classic pumpkin pie flavors coming through and, and you said it best first of all it's a good beer that's not too sweet and secondly it's a good ratio of spices that doesn't overwhelm the beer mm -hmm. at all you know it just complements it perfectly and I got a great little poem on the back too. I'm going to read here. So we'll do it in the autumn falls and paints the sky. The midnight hours quite nearby. Creatures crawl in search of beer to quell and quench their every fear. An ochre elixir shall be found, something dissimilar from those around. Ingredients that ferment like the hounds of hell are found inside a pumpkin shell. A spiced aroma in the air, a smell that comes but once a year. And this vessel of ale that we create is closing in to seal your fate. And as it falls, that first sip, your palate starts to shiver. No more mortal can resist what the pumpkin ale shall deliver. I love that. That almost uh, deserves an evil laugh. Like a... Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a... <laughs> I was trying to do my best, uh, my best thriller opening, you know? <laughs> well, the Vincent Price. <laughs> love yeah, it. that's right, yeah. <laughs> it's too good. Darkness falls across the land. <laughs> That guy's voice is iconic. Yeah, <laughs> that absolutely. song is iconic. Yeah, it is. It's like one of the only like we were at the uh, Christmas light show in Vaughn there on the weekend, and uh, it's just like five Halloween songs, and you realize that once you sat in the same light show for an hour and thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Ghostbusters, Thriller, Monster I don't even Mash. Know these. Yeah, Monster, Monster Mash. Mash. I think they played Pink. Uh, not Pink. Pink Lady. That's not even an artist. There's either Pink. 
or Lady <laughs> Gaga, Ryan. Um, Lady Gaga Monster, I think. Oh yeah, okay, that's that, I can see that in the in, in kind of a Halloweeny context. There yeah, was cool. a song that had a chorus with the words "monster," so I'm assuming that was her <laughs> song. <laughs> oh, man, they should have put Kanye West Monster in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. I would have said um, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, Nightmare oh, on My Street. Nightmare on My Street. Boom, that's boom, so boom, good. Boom, 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 boom. Such a great they, song, man. That was that was especially good. Uh, no, nobody's gonna know this except you and me, though, Ryan. Like this was so good. 1988 and it was actually for a nightmare on elm, elm street so freddy yeah. krueger was in the video like yeah. that was so wild man like that uh, gave damn. me nightmares like i think it was eight <laughs> when my buddy showed me the music video and um because we didn't i mean there was no youtube back then like i think oh, we we're at yeah. a sleepover or something and, and rap city or whatever was on late and it was halloween and that came on and i remember like my mom was like what the hell did you watch i was like oh freddy krueger he was, he was in a music video. <laughs> yeah, man, nobody, awesome. like I said, nobody's going to like 99% of listeners like, what are they talking about? <laughs> Freddy Krueger in a hip hop video? Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> that is a classic. That is yeah, like is. my <laughs> ultimate Halloween song. But yeah, you're right. There's like that, the Ghostbusters. And then yeah. maybe you could throw in um, some Beetlejuice. Uh, the, oh, what's yeah. this, the song at the end. I can't even think of it off the, the top of my head now. Yeah, hey, oh. Dale. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, so maybe it's 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 as much a Halloween song as is Die Hard a Christmas movie. Uh yeah, okay, fine. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh man. So some yes, some no. Yeah. <laughs> and I brought some of my friends with me for those watching in video. Oh in the man, background. is that Ash over there? That looks like um, Ash. yeah, from Walking oh, or not from Walking, but from Evil Dead. From Evil Dead, man. Yeah. Jeez. And then um uh, we've got um Sid Hag. Yeah, man. Uh, Rest in peace, House, Sid Hag. House of a Thousand Corpses. Um I love the Groot. The detail in that's incredible. As is the Venom, man. Oh yeah. my God, that looks fuck wild. So for anybody uh, who's listening to this and not watching, Ryan is very, very skilled at making beautiful pumpkins. And every year on his Instagram, he gets an opportunity to showcase some of his work. Um, so definitely take some time. If for any, if for no other episode, for this one, watch it on YouTube because you'll get a glimpse at Ryan's pumpkins. And follow him on Instagram to make sure you're seeing yeah. these. It's that season. And he I'm, he will not at all disappoint. Every year, they just keep getting better and better. Oh, look at those ones. Look at Bill Murray. Oh, my God. Jan Ackroyd, too. Oh, man. Look at look at Reitman there. <laughs> yeah, Spangler, Stance, and uh, Bankman. Yeah. <laughs> too good, man. Too yeah, good. I do. It's, it's been funny. You know, Ashley and I were just talking about it. I was like, it, I started, I guess, the year before Brock was born. So it'll be 12 years, 12 Halloweens ago. And I just started with making like a Jason mask was my first one. And Ooh, cool. And I do, I do, I have, I use like, these aren't free drawn. You know, I do use stencils to do them, but I will tell you, it's not, it's still not take a couple hours per pumpkin. Yeah. It doesn't look like the stenciling would, because from my understanding, Ryan, is that a lot of that is not even cut through, but it's just shaved down to the point mm -hmm. where you can lightly see that, that flame coming through it. Right. And I think you that's it. where it sounds like a lot of skill comes in and that is after you stencil it, how do you not ruin it by poking a hole in it and just getting down enough so you can see the different layers, right? Like yours are incredible. So I got to ask you, Robin, any suggestions on what I should carve this year? Because I'm really drawing blanks. Oh man. If you want to do something really difficult, uh, and I don't know if you've done this one before, Ryan, is uh, Freddy Krueger. Cool. I so do. His I have I his have one where he's his holding claw. his claw across his face oh, like this. That would be cool. So. That would be just because like I'm a monster, monster Nightmare yeah. on the Street fan. I think that'd be cool to see, uh, right. especially uh, glowing. Like Freddy's burns glowing through that. That looks so neat. A Freddy Krueger pumpkin it is. I was looking at it a couple of times. I'm going to do a, a, I'm going to do an earth. Like I'm going to hand freehand an earth, like a whole earth around the pumpkin. Wow. And I'm really going to try to see if I can contour the mountain ranges and stuff and, and really mess with it. So, well, I, right. Yeah. I feel like you wouldn't want to toss that out, man. Like, I don't know if you can preserve it, but there must be some way to like acrylic that or epoxy that or something to say, like, I they mean, do make pumpkins that you can carve that are like, like a quarter of an inch thick. They're plastic. Hmm. and um, oh. i don't know how effective they like how good they be but man if i had, yeah. I had that was 12 years ago 
I'd be like, they, they call me the crazy pumpkin guy. Like, like, <laughs> the pumpkins everywhere. Like <laughs> oh man. Well, you know, I guess it's also good to, you know, how ha- ha- it's kind of a, almost a little Buddhist to spend all of that time making something like that only to over the next day, toss it out and just be happy with the time that you had with it and appreciate it for that window. Right. So basically, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. a good point. I never really thought of it that way. Uh, you know, never Mario and that. Luigi love yeah. those. <laughs> and we got uh, Rick and Daryl from Walking Dead. Oh man, Wolverine. But yeah, wow. it's fun. I, I, it's, it's, it's a weird hobby. I know, you know, like I'm not artistic at all. Um, just uh, yeah, you're right. It's kind of like um, it's, it's mental therapy when I get a pumpkin in front of you, man. Like yeah. I'm just there and I'm doing it and I'm cutting really tight and. <laughs> and i'm here and i'm in this section right and, and i love i just love halloween man like i love yeah. scary movies and i love yeah. dressing up and like you know like and once i once i and then pumpkins like i i just love being able to let people see the what pumpkins can do too right because i'm yeah. fascinated by people who are next level that do those crazy faces and just turn the yeah. pumpkin hole into art like that that shit's something that someday i'll learn how to do but man oh man like yeah, I'm just fascinated by what people can do with, you know, these gourds, like make yeah, a great beer out of them. <laughs> brother, if you're not an artist doing this kind of stuff, I don't know what the hell the definition of art really is that, you yeah, know, so like much. as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> that is, that is art. In, in James Frankel's words uh, from, from This is the End, that's art. That, Mario Luigi, that's art. Right yeah, there, <laughs> that's art. <laughs> Too funny. <laughs> Too funny. So I want to ask you, we're, ta- you know, given that we're running up into this time of year, is there any um, of your, like, what's your most ultimate favorite? And we'll probably talk about this with Tiffany too, but what's that horror movie that you like to watch at least once, mm. excuse me, I leading mean, up to Halloween? Well, I'm, I'm kind of a big Halloween nerd. So I'll, I'll say, I'll give you a really basic answer. Until we meet with Tiff. Which, yeah, yeah, until we meet with Tiff. I'll say the Halloween series. But okay, yeah, yeah. real horror movie fan, I'll save my answer until we meet with Tiff. All right, cool. And for, <laughs> and for those who don't know, Tiffany, we're in, having Traveling Pint join us. Um, she is the ultimate Halloween fan. Her, her house is just amazing every year. So I'm excited. We're going to talk all things Halloween. Um, Can't wait, man. So I will do mine. And yeah. it's just it's just simple too and it's actually not really simple Ernest scared stupid oh come on that's great dude yeah Yeah. every year oh it's classic man and my my little guy loves it like we watched that one and and I remember when that came out even being a little scared from the (laughs) trolls and shit like yeah I mean that that special effects back then I thought they were pretty cool not to take anything away from the the fantastic green screens that we've seen (laughs) nowadays but I mean I thought some of the uh the sfx back then was so neat but uh, here's shout here's out. something i'll throw in what are you gonna say shout out to what shout out to ernest p warrell that's all i was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll for any halloween fan i'm gonna throw a, a little tidbit in for them because uh it, 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 halloween's an iconic series and it's still going on right i think there's a, a follow-up to the last one that's coming out in like yeah, two oh, weeks yeah. or something like that right so halloween six um this was known in its final release to be the curse of michael myers but originally this movie had come out and what well, not didn't come out originally this movie was taped and it was shown to a test audience that hadn't seen some of the other halloween movies and it had too much background so what they decided to do is they took that movie and re-recorded a lot of the scenes in it to change mm. the opening and altogether i think there's about I want to say between 16 and 20 minutes of different footage that changes the storyline in, in for part six. And uh, that version, if anybody can get a hold of it, it used to be available at all the comic cons. Uh, it, I think it was called the Halloween 666. And there was even a box set that I think Dimension released, uh, which was the production company um, recently, the production company, I think for, for Halloween, they released a box set that had that in it. It was the only box set I've ever seen that had that particular version of Halloween in it. So yeah. for any Halloween fans out there that think they've seen it all, maybe you haven't seen that. Kind of That's look cool. forward in the crates. Yeah, yeah. It's Not really the one with Buster Rhymes. 
that one's a little bit later. Oh, Buster yeah. Rhymes comes in in, I want to say H2O is the, the Buster Rhymes That's the Rhymes one, H2O, one. yeah. So I was thinking 95, right? I was like, oh, it might be or early. Or was that Buster. LL in H2O and then Busta in Halloween Resurrection? Maybe, yeah. LL's <laughs> in one of the two, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hip hop has a little bit of a crossover with horror movies. It totally does, the hood. man. Um, great yeah. movie, you know, like. One of my favorite on the uh, Red and Meth Blackout album was Serial Killer. You know, oh, it's yeah. just, uh, yeah, they uh, they always have that connection with haunting and, and that, man, it's great. Yeah. What are we going to do here next? Are we going to try the oh, next one? Man. We are going to be trying the Lake of Bays. I want to get right. another sip of this GLD. Mm. Mm -hmm. I find that it's much tastier. I find, I think I remember saying last year's was a little too light. And it didn't have as much as the, uh, you know, the spice that I was looking for, because I do mm -hmm. love the, the pumpkin spice. But I also love that they say, you know, some of these pumpkin beers, they may not necessarily include pumpkin in them. They just include the spices that you would typically find in a pumpkin pie, for example. Yeah, um, yeah, the, just to kind of give you that flavor. Yeah, and GLBs actually uses locally grown pumpkin. I mean, that seems to be really big, Ryan, the, the, the idea of breweries starting to focus so much on everything that's local and Canadian and Ontario. Um, not to mm -hmm. say GLB, that's new to them. They've been doing it since uh, like almost day one when they, when they sourced a lot of their stuff. But uh, it's becoming really big. And I, I like that push to start seeing you know, more local hops used, more local malts used, support the local farmers. Yeah, exactly. Well, even when we had um, Turkey Shoot on and we're sitting yeah. with Kyle chatting, like, you know, just really seeing that connection to the local experience and the benefit of it. Um, I had, oh, there you go. Yeah, so this one, the color slightly getting a little darker now. A little darker. Yeah, so a little different malts they're using on this. Mm. So this one actually says on the back, uh, so we'll do the run, readout. So celebrate sweater weather with this refreshing malt forward ale featuring Magnum and Fuggles hops, pumpkin, vanilla, and spice. So I'm assuming that spice would be like the all spice you find in your pumpkin mix. Nutmeg, cinnamon, mm -hmm. maybe cardamom. Um, subtle notes of nut and caramel make it an ideal partner for I love. So they, they both use the Harvest Fair, uh, <laughs> Fall Fair. So we've used, we've heard Harvest Fair and Fall Fair so far. So I know... <laughs> Flying Monkeys is going to say nothing about fair. <laughs> All uh, right. There, there's the theater within the fair. So this one, I will say that in the flavor, it, no doubt the caramel comes through mm -hmm. and gives it a, a stronger body. You know, um, the, the, definitely the GLB one, it had a bit of molasses, but way, way lighter body. This one's a little bit heavier. The vanilla definitely comes through, but... I will say, Ryan, that I don't get as many of the spices as I got from the GLD. No, it's it's almost a little more smoky, like the, from the malt. Yeah, you definitely get mm -hmm. more. It's very much more malt forward. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's why they say it's much more malt forward on the back of the can. <laughs> true, so, true, hey, true. Great job, Ryan. You nailed that. <laughs> Fuck. Oh man. <laughs> well, for anybody who reads the cans, I mean, uh, sometimes you read them and you're like, I'm looking for this like lychee. I'm not getting it in this. Like, what's going on? <laughs> like, at least this one, you're getting exactly what they're telling you, you guess. <laughs> I'd have to go to the grocery store first and I'd be like, You got any lychee? Because it says I should taste lychee. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this one's actually, you know, I, I, I really, you know, we've talked about it a lot. And I think this year's really been for me. The year of malt forward beers, yeah. um, you know, like go back to that beer to Mars, that Salter Street that we had, which was just beautiful. Amazing. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm actually really enjoying this one. It, you're right. It doesn't you're not really getting a lot of that pumpkin component to it. But yeah, I think the balance with the malts that they chose to use. Um, and I, I don't know, I guess it might be the Fuggles hops that's giving it a little bit of that spice to it almost. Mm -hmm. Or the smoky like there's a smokiness to it almost there. A little pepperiness in it. Mm -hmm. You know, Ryan, it's funny because I think mm -hmm. most times when people get this idea of a pumpkin mm -hmm. ale, the first thing they think is pumpkin pie. They, they, these beers are sometimes yeah. the furthest thing from that. Like they're just really trying to, you know, add pumpkin, of course, but then just jazz it up without making it into a pumpkin pie beer. Yeah, and body it, uh, like just kind of embody some of the elements of. Um, you know, I, every sip I have of this one, it's actually growing quite nicely on me. I know. I thought the same thing <laughs> by, by the time I finished. I was like, wait, this is 
actually kind of good. I'd enjoy this on an evening. Oh, yeah. wow, dude. Oh, yeah, my new ad. So, oh, I forgot Ram. the guy from Goosebumps name now. Um, the uh, ventriloquist dummy. Slappy. Slappy. There you go. <laughs> and then, oh, yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's over here. Over here. Five Nights at Freddy. Yeah. You got like Gizmo. Spike and, and Gizmo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> from Gremlins. Gizmo looks so awesome, man. Love him. Oh, man. It's starting to feel too much like Christmas now. And I'm seeing that. Like, I don't know it why. That, that, that's all Christmas time when it comes to Gremlins. Christmas. Uh, we were in the grocery store this afternoon and Viva Puffs candy cane flavor was out. So, oh, too early. Too early. It's coming. <laughs> what happened to Viva Puffs Pumpkin Spice Edition? Pumpkin Spice Edition. <laughs> they put it in the beer. <laughs> they put it in the beer. <laughs> oh, I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, so it does no, what I do like, and, and I would love to see more companies do this, and I'll show it to the camera. And we do see a few of them do it. The Lake of Bays always includes their ingredient list on the back. Yes, they do. So, I think yeah. So I love this because like you know, it it tells the best serve temperature, it tells the IBU, it tells, you know, it says all natural, partially filtered, what malt, so two row pale and some caramel and wheat and chocolate. So, you know, you definitely get that, even though the chocolate, I would say is su more subtle, you find those notes in there pretty heavy. And I think that's where that smokiness is coming from. You got it, man. I was just gonna say that. I think that's the chocolate doing that. And then, yeah, we said Magnum and Fuggles hops and then special ingredient pumpkin. So, you know what? They've done a really great job on this one. Yeah, man, super good, super good. And I, I'm, I'm disappointed I haven't had this in my regular pumpkin rotation, to be honest. This is like a nice fall drinker. Yeah, it is, man. It would go nice with a pretzel, actually, like a pretzel and mustard. It would go nice with mm -hmm. uh, a Bavarian sausage. It would go nice with. Yeah, I could enjoy yeah. that. I, and I like the nice simple can art, too, with the crow and the pumpkin. Just yeah. like a nice, simple art. Mm. Yeah, this is a really good one. And I, I you I know, like it. <laughs> We said it earlier, I think it's, you know, pumpkin beers are definitely, not only are they hit and miss for people to want to like, but, you know, it's it's a very specific taste in beer, right? Especially as yeah. we move down the line. Mm -hmm. um, those spices and stuff, like a lot of people aren't used to that and no different than people are used to fruit or um, anything else in their beer, so... Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, this is all just kind of an extension of creativity that we see out of the brewers, right? Like, this is amazing. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this one. I know I'm excited for the next one, so I'll have a couple more sips of this first. Um, we do actually have uh, Flying Monkeys joining us in, well, we're joining them, actually, <laughs> in two weeks. Going to a on, brewery. Oh, uh, yeah, into on the thing. 17th. Wow. Yeah, I know. I can't wait till we can turn <laughs> that into a normal thing again. Hmm. Oh, my really God. really enjoying right. that. This is, uh, so here's the thing. For me, Great Lakes, I would like that one as an after dinner with dessert beer this yeah. one for me is a, a wood dinner beer you know like it would complement a lot of that kind of fall time food that you would have like mm -hmm. uh, you know country pie is the first thing that comes to Ooh, mind yeah. you know like it would be like so good with that beef yeah beef pot pie or like a yeah. nice stew a nice fall yeah. stew yeah harvest, harvest it would be soup. great with this yeah or a nice like um soup too french onion mm -hmm. soup even would be good mm -hmm. with this very good call. French onion soup would be fantastic with this. Mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying this one. This one was, um, mm. this is the surprise entry for me here. Same goes, man. I hadn't, I hadn't tried it before, um, but definitely will now add it to the uh, repertoire of evening beers. Mm. All right, I'm going to clear the palate here. No, get tall, get tall. Why don't you, I know we have it written down. Why don't you uh, introduce everybody to number three? Oh my goodness. This almost deserves a, a theatrical uh, um, uh, walkthrough on what, what's here. So this is, this is right from Flying Monkeys because their, their write-outs are always too good. Again, the uh, specter of pumpkin beers lured us to the stage of bizarre in incarnation of the unexpected, but this time, oh madness. In a lager brewed featuring pureed pumpkin, co-starring the trio of cinnamon, allspice, and nutmeg, and orchestrated with a creamy dollop of lactose, the depth of this haunting lager performance captivated our brew house with its eerie and delicious taste. So I, th this one, you know, I, 
I love monkeys for these theatrical writeouts that they have because this mm -hmm. really makes me feel like I just saw a trailer for this beer. <laughs> I got one. Totally, yeah, I got to go back to reading it. Movie. That voice, like now playing a fresh pumpkin lager <laughs> brewed featuring pureed pumpkin. Co-starring cinnamon, allspice, and nutmeg. Meg, Meg, Meg. <laughs> you gotta turn it up, bro. There's a movie in itself, man. It's like Jeez. the old, uh, reminds me, you remember Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy when it first oh, came yeah. out and they did like, the guy introducing the movie is like, you know, he's like, and the guy who's introducing the movie should sound like he smoked 40 packs of cigarettes a day. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have that smoky jazz voice. My son's got me on the so old Simpsons episode, so I've been hearing a lot of, Hi, I'm Troy McClure. You remember <laughs> me from such pumpkin beer episodes as Gonna Be Starting Pumpkin. <laughs> it's all right. I want to, before I even smell this beer, um, although the previous two cans have featured some absolutely fantastic artwork, shout outs to Flying Monkeys. This can is so beautiful, Ryan. Like the... Mm -hmm fine detail in every bit of it from like those skeletal arms pulling that uh pulling the the curtain open the all of the skeletons hold, holding up the letters in the open mouth of the jack-o-lantern this is just this is too nice flying monkeys uh you know from for me and my preference of can artwork is one of my favorite for sure mm -hmm. I, I do like a few others as well um like glb of course because theirs is too fun but this is incredible man like what the hell hmm. so is the beer um yeah oh. you're right i think flying monkeys is kind of like my favorite one of my favorite shows big brother expect the unexpected you know what to expect but you don't know what to expect with their labels Oh, man, that tastes so good, doesn't it? Fine. Oh my so god! So we're like, and we're going, we're going darker down the line. So this one obviously has much darker malts used. There's more caramel and chocolate malts yeah. used in this one than the Lake of Bays, um, yeah. and subsequently the GLB. And there's lactose in it, which we didn't see, I believe, in the last two as well, Ryan. Which uh, significantly changes the body, and it actually gives it a little bit of that extra sweetness as well, it's, right? It brings in that almost that pumpkin pie vibe to it, right? Like, <laughs> it does, it um. Does. It's you know, the creaminess that way. The little sweetness, like instant, right? Like, because normally when you eat the pumpkin pie, one of the first things you taste is that whipped cream. You yeah. get that whipped cream first, right? And I think they've really done that well here. Like that first sip, like on the instant, the tip of the tongue, you get that sweet. And then it just rolls over into those nice dark malts and yeah, pumpkin man. spices. And Now, right, to me, this job. is leaning towards being a dessert beer, right? Like that, that's, yep. for me, that's what this would be. I, I, I would less enjoy this with dinner unless it's with a pretzel. Again, I don't know, with a pretzel, these kinds of beers always go well. But uh, outside of that, th this would be a dessert beer for me. I think it would complement uh, pumpkin pie beautifully. In all yeah, see, we're working our way down here. Afternoon <laughs> beer, dinner beer, dessert beer. What kind of beer will this one be? The fireplace <laughs> beer, That's because right. you got to have it glow in the dark. <laughs> That's right. But yeah, no, they, you know, we said it earlier, and I think, from when it comes to pumpkin beers, paranormal has, and probably always will. Well, I don't know, always will, but that's like my go-to favorite. It's been my favorite yeah, for years. Yeah. Um, like pumpkin beers of, of many, like I know a big rigs a few couple years ago, I just, I couldn't, it just wasn't there. GLB's last year wasn't quite there for me. Um, you know, paranormal has always, you know, stay, stayed that line and always been a very good, strong, it's strong, it's 10%. Um, but I think this here is like that dial back version of it. So this is very close, but it's not that not high ABV. It's not as yeah. spiced. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little more approachable, I think, for the non regular beer drinker. Um, mm -hmm. Like once in a while when you, you know, you hop into monkey. Like, oh, cool. They've got like a pumpkin beer here. Yeah, 10% sometimes scares uh, a, a lot of the non regular beer drinkers because it gets really high. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Like, I think it's fantastic. Like even you said, it's, uh, you know, one of those staples. I, I've always thought that to be one of my favorites. But uh, yeah, I like this year's approach with something that's a little bit lighter. Yeah, more approachable. A couple of these ones. It's very flavorful. And it, it you know, again, it's a darker lager, right? It, so it's mm -hmm. riding, it's riding down towards, you know, like the malt the malt flavor you get from like almost a Schwartz beer. Or, yeah. Um, you know, something definitely more in that direction. Um, yeah, I, I think they've done a great job. I, I was talking with Andrea about it. 
because she said she said the same that she's very partial on paranormal and so I complimented this one because I had it a couple weeks ago and I just really enjoyed it I thought wow like they really nailed it again and this one is much more drinkable it's much more like you said approachable but it's still it's full flavor it's full flying monkeys it still embodies everything that's flying monkeys yeah I mean they're beers man god damn just bangers bangers uh it's funny right I was talking to somebody this week they're like um but last week there there and this is an interesting story there i was at the bar and they're saying yeah have you tried these uh seltzers uh, out there there's this uh, tangerine vanilla one oh, or something yeah. like an orange creamsicle i was like yeah yeah i, I know what you're talking about uh, uh M- M- monkeys and in, is involved in that that's their brand and he's like no 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 it's this brand called infinite minds <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> like that's the new seltzer that's brand the that one <laughs> it that's would be cool ryan if they did a pumpkin spice seltzer I, monkeys i can see them <clears throat> doing that damn well i think i've seen yeah I th- for sure i think i've seen a few not them but i think i've seen some out there damn um, man there's quite a variety like that's the thing too when we were making this selection like i really wanted to um dox the pumpkin ale and bring in saison du pump because uh, <laughs> but i i like didn't get access to get it this weekend but um also this is accessible people that are listening can join along and do their ratings if they want but yeah glb saison du pump's always been a really really good one for me too i got a can for you don't worry oh you're the man i haven't had it in a couple years because it used to be available in the in the bombers at the liquor store yeah yeah and then they stopped doing that yeah bombers i think it's a, a less desirable format for some people i think they're kind of fun especially to share but even if not to share if it's low yeah. enough alcohol i think it's fun to enjoy it throughout the afternoon right like, well because they would only throw them out this time of year the winter yeah. ale the pumpkins yeah. like you would get yeah. those big bombers and it's like yeah like winter beers i'm gonna drink more and get warmer yeah. right so <laughs> let's go but yeah there, there's quite a few like um there's the glb we talked about the smoothie one Mm-hmm. um grand river also has one available at the lcbo high baller pumpkin ale and i have had that one before a couple years ago How and it was it? really t- really tasty one as well oh, I'm, but okay. i'm not really familiar with many other grand river beers either Fair enough. There's, there's so many darn breweries out there i'm sure there's I probably know, tell me 200 it. pumpkin <laughs> beers out there right now somewhere <laughs> on tap or in can that we just didn't cover because so there's true. a lot of breweries so therefore there's a lot of beers <laughs> so th- on that note tell us what to try for all the listeners out there who've also tried beers outside of this let us know what beers we should be trying this year for halloween or for mm-hmm. the fall time for for pumpkin beers and if you haven't tried any of these definitely try these tell us what you think of them too yeah i think they're great i'm enjoying mm-hmm. them i think and, and i think what's cool too is they're not um they're not overstepping each other's flavor you know what i mean like oh, absolutely right very different profiles yeah they're all very different mm. Mm. all right we're moving on to the next one is that the plan right, or are you one. pouring the flying monkeys again because it's so uh good. well i i can do some more of the monkeys because it tastes delicious but if you want to move on to the patch i can do that mm. as well <laughs> i'd say let me, oh, we pour, can, let me we, take a little bit more of the monkeys let me take we, a little yeah, bit more we can have monkeys. a bit little we can always go back to you right we can always go back so we are looking at what are we going to do? Pumpkin beers. You know what I was going to say? Oh, I was going to ask you. So are you going to be wearing a costume when we meet with <laughs> Tiffany? I am going to try to. <laughs> I was thinking about doing maybe like a, a, a zombie get up, but I, I, I got to do the, um, I don't know if you remember that from when you're young, that fake skin stuff, you oh, yeah, that yeah. waxy stuff that you put the makeup on afterwards. So yeah. I have to do that kind of stuff, but uh, I thought it would be kind of fun. How about you? Um, I am going as Dr. Evil. Oh, good one. Good one. Now, because it's a week before, this will give me a chance to practice my costume and makeup. So, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good call. Because I'm going call. as Dr. Evil this year. Um, Brock is undecided. And we just recently watched, um, here, I'll show you my Batman. Um, so we just recently watched. Um, Austin Powers. Oh yeah. And like I you, maybe a little early for him, but like there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot. Of, I mean, I and I recognize too, and I want to recognize like there's a lot of very over hypersexual jokes and stuff and borderline stuff yeah. in there. And I recognize that. 
but he doesn't get those jokes yet either to me so yeah. he uh you know he was laughing at the stuff like dr evil would do or he didn't understand the stuff that was happening or maybe he does and he doesn't say anything but whatever um i don't know but at the same time he's gonna you know he's gonna be exposed to it one way so yeah i agree through me <laughs> I mean, you know, it's that whole idea of like, there's some degree of like conversation and supervision when you're there, because sometimes when kids are alone watching that stuff, Ryan, like there's no debrief, there's nobody there to explain to them what it is that they've just seen. And I think a big part of that experience is taking the opportune moment to explain to kids, like, this is what, what it is that's, that's happening here. This is what we're seeing, right? Exactly. Otherwise there's, there's no differentiation between what's appropriate and what's not. I, th I think that that's what's good that, you, that you're always doing is you're always sitting there with Brock, making sure that you're always debriefing, you know, you always explain like, this is what's happening. And that's super important. We basically debrief after every Simpsons episode because there's that much debriefing required. So like how it was on the air and still on for so long, I have no idea. Like, it's I, a pretty loaded show. It's a pretty loaded It's show. so loaded. I know, dude. Holy. Yeah. Like we were watching the one where like where Apu um, came like they were it was the they were trying to send everybody out right they're like he was yeah, like well yeah. it's not the it's not the bear tax that's costing us money you know it's the immigrants that are costing us money and then and as like oh, and I said to Brock I'm like I pa I literally paused the show yeah. and I said do you remember because he was aware of Donald Trump and I said do you remember listening to Donald Trump in his campaigning talking about the same circumstance and he was like holy shit and i said brock this is a this is a season six episode like this is 1992 we're talking yeah. i was like wow like you know i had totally had to pause and and do that and say hey like this is still an issue people still think this way and this is why this yeah. is not okay yeah. let's continue the episode type of thing right but yeah, yeah it's crazy like every episode, yeah, it's like, okay, you caught that, right? You know, that's not okay, right? Like, this is why it's not okay. Yeah. <laughs> you got that. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. Every that episode. Show, man. You know, it's, it, I think that in the 90s, there was a lot of kind of this, this philosophy and this idea of like, oh, it's just a joke. And uh, I think that a lot of comedy has got away with some stuff that maybe was not so positive. I mean, mm -hmm. when they were watching Seinfeld recently and, uh, we were watching the Donna Chang episode. I don't know if you're. Oh yeah, that one. yeah, and yeah. Linda, being from an Asian background, she was like, "This is kind of like not the most appropriate, right?" So you you watch it from that lens, and you're like, "Right, like I mean, I can see how people could look at this and be like, wait, wait, this 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 is an appropriate the message needs to be changed a little bit.'" Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I mean, that's the that it's a different time period. And you know what's funny about that? I th I think I I have a little more of an understanding behind why after hearing an interview with Tarantino, Tarantino said the '80s was this time of film prohibition where it was complete censorship, and then in the '90s everything opened up for film TV a little bit more. Everybody was kind of trying to push that envelope and that limit. And I think in that process, maybe people sometimes push that envelope too hard, right? Like, it's okay yeah. to sometimes, you know, in, in, have these controversial issues that we approach in these TV shows, but let's have it be the right way. Right. Well, yeah, that's it. That's how you begin to create those. That's where those racial stereotypes begin to set yeah. in stone and stuff, oh, right? Yeah. And, and like these, yeah. these stereotypes, you know, may not have necessarily been as prominent or I'm not created because it wasn't as visually available through media, like you said, in the eighties due to censorship and stuff. Yeah. It's crazy, man. And, and, and yeah. we do, we watch it like, and it's like other shows too. And it's like, wow, man, like how it's, it's always Fox though. Right. Like it's like, <laughs> it's literally American dad, family guys. Futurama. How? It's like, Oh yeah, it's Fox. Like they just yeah. don't give a fuck and yeah. they'll say whatever because that's yeah it's crazy but it's funny because it's you're aware now and like being yeah. aware when you watch it like you said with the donna chang episode for example it's yeah. just like holy shit like this is like it, it it goes to i told you about the circumstance surrounding the poll that i was doing and and you know i'd like to talk about that quickly you know when you begin to see and, and side with issues and and try to be vocal and, and an advocate um you got to always be kind of conscious and that's what we're talking when you see these episodes and i'm talking with brock like you see why this is why it is and we you know this is yeah. wrong um you know I, it was brought to my attention that during one of my polls we had dmx and tupac and 
And I didn't think nothing of it. And you know what? Some people listening probably, you know, think what, whatever, but it was brought to my attention by a good friend in the community, you know, like this could be offensive to people. And here's why, because one was an animal abuser, one was a woman abuser. And that never crossed my mind. Um, so, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you, you may not catch right away, but once you do, you have to be like, oh, okay, like now, how do I, you know, where do we go from yeah. here? Do we use it as a learning opportunity to teach through it? Like Brock listens to all my hip hop music, yeah. right? Like he's singing along DMX songs with me. Yeah. So now it's a teaching point. Like, Hey, just so you know, like this is, you know, this is what he did and, and, and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's just like always this weird as, as you grow in that world, like of learning, yeah. um, you start to unpack some stuff and it's like, wow, man, like, yeah. shit. I think, you know, Ryan, a, a, lot of, a lot of it to me seems and I don't know, man, maybe it's just because I, I, I always try to understand the situation. A lot of it seems that it's, we don't necessarily need to take in any ever, any sort of extremist approach towards these situations. But again, use them as learning opportunities, right? Like even for Brock, like talk about the, the, the talent that Tupac ha had mm. that, and talk about the influences in his life that drove him in the wrong direction. And, exactly yeah you know like right? talk about some some of that lost potential that we could have seen right like i mean mm -hmm. so i think that in that i think the observation of who these individuals are is very important that's never to be forgotten yep. but i also think that when it comes to those kinds of opportunities that you have with brock i think like we got to showcase a lot of what this artist had but the fact that we as humans sometimes we're we really don't know what this path in life is going to take us to mm -hmm. and sometimes because of where we are and the circumstances that we're under we we fall into this belief that like this must be true this is the way i need to be and this is the way that i need to act and yep. because of that the, sometimes there are these negative actions that we see these artists kind of engage in right but again opportunities to talk to to people like brock about like listen, like th this person had a lot of potential. You can hear it like in, in songs like mm -hmm. Brenda's Baby when you hear that, you know what I yeah. mean? You see somebody that's talking about something that, man, it's like so powerful. And uh, obviously, and you know this, Ryan, like Pax, his life, like he, he was very influenced by a lot of different people. And a lot of negativity at the end. Exactly. Yeah. The last nine months of his life was with death row, man. Like that's- Nine months, that's it. That's he was, it. That's he was it. recording nine records and, and yeah. doing stuff since 88 yeah and yeah. nine months with death row in 97 and it was yeah. all 96 and 97 he's a lost individual too right man always like, yeah. you know and and we're all lost individuals i don't want to turn this into this whole existential thing but we're yeah all lost individuals <laughs> right like i mean lost. come on <laughs> like i mean we're all just trying to find our way but i think that you know again conversations to be had are very important to try to recognize what's gone wrong to better understand how we don't do that and then head in the right direction. 100%. And yeah, and don't listen to R. Kelly. That's just the wrong direction. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There is no right direction there, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm lighting up the next can. I'm gonna fire this light up. Let's see what we got. You think this is gonna work? I wonder if it'll work. All right, we're going to try, guys. We're going to the team, everybody. We're going to go to Tales from the Patch next after that deep talk. So I'm trying to I know, we this. totally like, sorry, my bad. <laughs> That's okay. No, it's good. We talk about this stuff on the show. I think people, everybody who's listening knows we, we talk about stuff that matters. All right, we're going to see if this glows first, everyone. So we're going to try a quick glow test. For those that are listening, if you're driving your car, don't close your eyes and picture it. But if not, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to see. It's hard to see there. Okay, you, I, I, I can give it a try on mine. Let me uh, see what I can get going. Let's uh, wait a couple of moments here, see if we can charge her up. It is a little bit, like I can see it glowing to me. I don't know if it'll capture it. So it does glow. So here's my test to everybody else. And not test, but challenge. Buy a big rig pumpkin porter. Yes. Put it under the light, pour it into a glass, and go into your bathroom and turn the lights off. Because we know that's fun to make stuff glow, people. <laughs> and post this. Post the yeah. app or elements podcast on that so we can see your photos yeah, and glowing hashtag big Hashtag is on the glowing big rig cans. And then tell us what you think about the beautiful big rig juice that's inside of it. 
I think it's a cool. So yeah, there you go. Nah, I mean, it's, it's hard to see, man. Yeah, because yeah. the green screen and stuff too. But it is, um, you know, pumpkin porter. We we had Robin was gonna ask, and you got the glowing light too, right, of the monitor. It, know, it's, it's absolutely it's just, impossible for us to make yeah, this happen. Yeah, it's just not. Working. <laughs> um, but we talked. You talked at the beginning. So the can, I think it started glowing like three years ago. Oh goddamn! I'm really behind on that. Right, so, I had no idea. Oh no! So I, I maybe it was last year it was introduced. I do remember at least one more year, but I think two. I think this is the third year. Wow, man. So I, you know, in a day and age, Ryan, where where companies are trying to save a little bit of money on stuff, like to integrate glow in the dark packs, you can't be cheap. The folks are paying, right? No, it's no. I don't. Yeah, like it's interesting. I'd love to learn about that because it's it's kind of. It's a cool gimmick. All right. So let's, it is, let's call it what it is. It's a gimmick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, but it's a cool gimmick, right? Like, yeah, I exactly. Like, it's a cool gimmick, cool gimmick. Yeah. Yeah. No different than like, you know, th- like, like when you, like, I love gimmicky beers, like flavored beers. Pumpkin beers is a gimmicky beer. Like, yeah, let's get yeah. down to the brass tacks, right? <laughs> like, we're talking a gimmick here. It's, it's, and I think the glowing can is a great concept. It makes it fun. You know, we are talking about, um, Halloween it is a dark dark beer like it's a porter so you know bring in those elements and if anybody's ever been in a pumpkin patch at night with no light a glowing beer can would be exceptional to (laughs) feel safe as a torch to get you through that's too good wow cheers so much as we see we've definitely gone darker in the malts as we've gone down the selection of beers Mm. oh okay this is so good First of all, this is a very different beer, right? Like we went from ales all the to way. lagers and now to a porter. Um, yeah. So it, it's it, it definitely is utilizing uh, a different malt set on this one. Um, way darker malts in it. The lactose in it absolutely helps make it a little bit creamy. We get like yeah. a little bit of clove in the scent. Oh, I, I, I got that right. It's uh, this uh, super smooth milk porter is laced with mm. real spices and pumpkin to make a beer that tastes like you're drinking an apple pie. So it's and a milk boot, porter. You got it. It's a milk porter. And to boot, the can glows in the dark, of course. And it's a pumpkin pie that you're drinking, not an apple pie. Just so, <laughs> yeah. so we straighten that one out, too. <laughs> <laughs> too good. Too good. Um, wickedly good. So, yeah, pumpkin mm. pie, spiced porter, scary good, Ooh. says on the back. You know what? Yeah, man. Um, I think one of the things, and, and you and I have talked about this, um, pumpkin spice to me really seems to settle in darker beers like it just yeah. the pumpkin style it, it just seems to it just seems that it would be a great fit in stouts and porters i've yeah. always thought that yeah. um when you're outside in the fall in your keswick dinner jacket you know what that is now <laughs> uh in your lumberjack well, i haven't coat. seen yours ryan i don't okay. have one i'm in <laughs> oh, innisfil oh. <laughs> 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 I'm on the lower economy street of the higher economy in a spill, Robin. <laughs> I got to wear expensive looking coats. <laughs> um, but no, like this is like this is a porter is always one of those nice traditionally fall beers for me, like dark lagers and porters. Yeah. yeah. And I just this one is so really well done this year. Yeah, um, right. Smooth. Yeah. And a milk yeah. porter. So like I've had milk stouts. I've never had a milk porter before the the sweetness of the lactose once again doesn't get to the point where it's overpowering anything um if there is lactose in this because they're saying it's a milk mm. porter but the, there, there's nothing that you know would normally you get that strong strong sweetness from that that comes through on this or it could just be the bitterness of the malts is balancing up balancing off the sweetness that well as well i'm gonna check something because yeah i've never had a milk porter so i've had a milk stout what makes a milk porter a milk porter my assumption on that one was lactose, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Milk stouts, cream stouts. So oh, yeah, brewed with lactose. Yeah, you nail it right on the money, right? Absolutely. Oh, lactose. Yeah. So th- you know what? I think it's going to be hard rating system. I'm going to have to do a, a pour of each into the sampler glasses and do a one more sip, sip, sip through. A simultaneous. Yeah. Uh huh. But um, yeah, really big shout out to Bakery on this one. I think I, I I've loved. You know, we love porters and stouts at this time of year and um 
Yeah, and and the like the nice coffee roast still comes through, mm-hmm. so it it leans more like a, a like a sweet pumpkin spice coffee almost. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, they say mm-hmm. pumpkin pie, but you get those like coffee roasts in the dark malt still. Even that little like kind of chocolatey almost like. Uh, yeah, they must use the like... chocolate malts, and I would say like maybe oh, a lot more chocolate with some caramel. I don't think they use any carafe malts in it. I mean, this is incredible, Ryan. Good job on Big Rig. Good job mm-hmm. on Big Rig. That's fantastic. So tales from the patch, love tales love from the patch. Last year we did, uh, what was it not a pumpkin patch, but it was a night night tour flashlight corn maze. Oh, that sounds fun. That shit's scary, man. Like, yeah, <laughs> like you're out there and like, and it's a big maze. And when you're out there back there by yourself and nobody comes around for like 20 minutes, so you're like, uh, oh, man, am I in the right spot? <laughs> like, oh, dude, I, uh, let me share this story with you. I, one, one year I was at Screamers with my brother in uh, Niagara Falls and they, uh, <laughs> I didn't know they lock you into a room there. So we were locked in this room where I was like, hey, Dave, do you feel any door on your side? Do you feel an exit? And he's like, no and I was like I don't feel one on my side either did we get locked in somewhere and I started like checking the wall to see if that was the door and suddenly on the PA they're like sir please do not damage your doors do not damage your doors <laughs> <laughs> suddenly they open it up they're like let this guy through he's gonna tear down things if we don't let him that's through. hilarious we've never <laughs> done screamers I'd love to do that one. oh dude Brock would just love that oh, so much I, brother oh my god he's not done a traditional excuse me haunted house yet really too okay. scared when we went and like and last well, two years you're overwhelming man i get scared <laughs> you know this scary right <laughs> so last year i mean obviously covid there wasn't nothing going on like that yeah. but um yeah like we've done the kitty ones but none of the uh none of the big ones but i think this year might be the year maybe to, this wonderland is, year is supposed to, to be it. real good i i yeah. hear that super theatrical there but uh Oh, also, I mean, I think the cost goes with that one. That's a little bit well, more expensive. Well, yeah, and we did it once. I, I believe Ashley and I went, gosh, not I believe, we did. We went like way, way many years ago, like before Brock was born. Um, and it was it was cool, but when you got into the haunted houses, yeah, they didn't space you. So oh. like, you know, like you're going yeah, through like a lineup. Same. So yeah, like yeah. you get to see the people 10 in front of you get scared and it's like, ah, <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> um one of the like, best I, I gotta get expected to be scared yeah exactly <laughs> right like you just want to stop and stop the line you're like nobody's going i want to get scared you know, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like oh, yeah, we do I, I don't know if they're doing it this year but out here in my way there's a little museum called the simple county museum okay. and uh they up until obviously last year the scouts did an amazing it's this old like they've got all these like old like kind of like early like early 1800s schoolhouses and the blacksmith shop and the train <laughs> station you know it's like one yeah. of those kind of places yeah and um they they use the whole area and there's like wooded lots and and it was so well done like these kids would volunteer wow. they have a train and like there's people crumbing out zombies from under the train like oh, it was wow really really good really really good and it's like six dollars and you get to go oh, inside wow. and there's all these games and it's like yeah dude it's holy moly that's so, super elaborate and super affordable yeah and they, they send you in groups of like six or, or eight max so you go that and you actually sense. get scared yeah. and you know like yeah. and i love it like i i don't get scared like when people come up and i'm like man that's really good like you know like because <laughs> i love it i'm like dude you are so awesome you look great oh <laughs> uh, dude i'm the other way i like I, I i go into like defense mode it's like what was that oh yeah <laughs> but mind you i've never like, done screamers like that yeah. but we did like the ones down at c and e when they would set it up i don't remember what it's called now but they had like a bunch at the c and e yeah screamers um, was at the c and e oh was it screamers? super elaborate one with the chainsaw that they're chasing yeah yeah yeah, okay. chain. yeah, yeah. and you're a you're a haunted on a movie guy you like slasher flicks and you can't even make it through a screamers trailer oh man, man. it's too intense, for me. Too intense. <laughs> you know that guy with the chainsaw it doesn't have any chain on it right Rob? oh no <laughs> <laughs> it's just a character <laughs> acting <right? Like laughs> oh, my God. oh man too true. i love him yeah that's one of like oh, that's man. up until recently that was my ultimate for halloween brother it was ashy would take brock trick-or-treating 
Yeah. Um, and he was small, so like he would only go like a, a street. And I would dress up and scare the kids. And every year it was something different. One year I was a zombie and I chained myself to the fence. And yeah. when they came in, they didn't see me. And then when they walked to get the candy, then I'd come out with my chains, drag oh, in. No, oh, and they were like, all right, would be you the guy. scared the living daylights out of these kids, dude. <laughs> well, like little kids would, but I if there was little kids, I wouldn't yeah. even scare them, right? Like I like, yeah, 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 yeah. like I'd say seven and up, you're in for a scare. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, if you're yeah. like two to seven, then I'm going to take it. Like I would take my masks off or whatever. And oh, like, hey, nice, nice. come yeah. see my pumpkins I carve. Like, oh, come <laughs> see this cool pumpkin. Like I did a cars pumpkin. Do you like cars? That's like nice. I would yeah. always try to make sure the little kids didn't get scared. Cause I, yeah. I ain't for that. Like Halloween's yeah. gotta be fun. Yeah. Um, but when you, especially like when you're coming around like nine 30 at night and you're 12, 13 years old and you're going with all your friends, like Oh, right. You, you should get, have some special setup for those kids. Oh, right? you're getting scared. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 13 years old. The mood music goes on with the lightning and everything to creep things oh, out. Dude, the lights oh, man. On Robin, if that. I could <laughs> find the pictures, man, I'll send them to you. Like, when we, we our old house, I, like, the house, I'm talking the whole house, like, our, yeah. our main master bedroom window had, like, this murder scene in it, and it looked like a murder was <laughs> happening. I would open the garage and I had a whole scene in the garage with like blood everywhere. And I got the neighbor next door and she was our babysitter. Oh, yeah. I got her to act out like I was cutting her in pieces in the garage and shit, dude. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, dude, I used to go all out, man. That's elaborate. I like that, man. I like that. That's cool. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, man. Fun. It's, yeah. it's just it, it, like, the, and I don't mind the older kids going. I think it's cool. Like for me, yeah. I was never like, I was never the one like, oh, as if you're out here, like, I would just scare them more, yeah, right? Like yeah, I'd give them yeah, a good you, start. Like hold on to your childhood. Yeah. Go trick or treating. Yeah. I would. I wish I could still go trick or treating. Oh hell yeah, man! <laughs> well, that's what I do what with Brock. Nice? <laughs> now well, I take yeah, Brock. Parent, you and, get to, <laughs> and I get to carry one of these with me. <laughs> I should strap a little bag onto the dog and take him trick or treating. <laughs> get Marley to go up to the front. Borrow a niece or a nephew or a friend's child. You know how many friends would love to get rid of their child on Halloween, oh, Robin? It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Me. No. <laughs> mm. All right. So are we going to have to, how are we going to rate these? I'm going to do this. Uh, this is a hard rate on this one, man. This is a tough rate. I do want to do this. So let's do a side by side view, Ryan. Because we're not drain pouring these, they all taste very good. Yeah, yeah, they're all very, all right. very good. We got to do this for the gram too, everybody. Hold on, I got to take a picture. <laughs> I do have to take a picture. So I think next week we're it's, it's Thanksgiving, so I don't believe we have an episode set up, but that's okay. Ooh. Um, flying monkeys the following week. We got Tiffany at Traveling Pint. We're working on. I'm um, not working on. We're just lining up a date with New Ontario Brewing. That'll be real nice good lot that's another fantastic one man good lots beers are great all right let's get these out front all right so we're gonna do our ranking here just give me a second here all i can say is that these were all really good and this is really hard to rank them how i'm thinking there's a lot of factors to build into this So, what kind of factors are we looking for here, Robin? Like drinkability, um, real so, pumpkin beer. Yeah. So, how much of the pumpkin flavor comes through in the beer? Um, are the spices and is the pumpkin overpowering? Is it take over the beer? Same yes. with the spices. Is there spices? Are they too overpowering? Do they over overpower that style of beer? All right. I That's guess gonna make it even harder. <laughs> <laughs> should have had a rubric beforehand. <laughs> Didn't think right. I think so. We probably should have had a scoring system. So we'll just rate them. Um, I'm gonna take one last shot right here. There, that's the picture right there, like that. Bam! That's the money shot they call it, folks. <laughs> Put it on the gram that was down all day. I'm sure everybody was struggling with that. I was just trying to post a picture for the podcast day and I was like, man, what the heck's going on? This is the same thing I've seen on my stream all day. That's literally what happened to me, Ryan. I, I went on there this morning and then I went on again after lunch. I was like, wait, like this is the exact same picture that I saw this morning. And it, when I tried to refresh it, couldn't refresh, couldn't refresh feed. Here, I want to see. I'm going to slide this out of the way yeah, so you can that. see the color contrast. Oh, that's a, that's a great photo there. 
So I think yeah, the definitely color really these yeah, two are very close. There this you is go. the yeah. theater and the this is so this here is the theater and this here is the Lake of Bays. Mm -hmm. Um but I love that. So that goes to show like you know and I think this going back to that uh chat we have with Chris Lee from High Gravity shout out Chris um on the malt right and then just yeah. the different colors that you get. So this is a great example showcasing how these brewers have chosen to use their malts. GLB stayed with the lighter malt grain bill. Lake of Bays is they they said it they've done a mix of that chocolate and caramel. I'm I it, I don't know what Flying Monkeys is, but it's so similar. I think they probably just used a little it's, bit more chocolate than caramel. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then obviously the porter, which is going to be much more on the chocolate caramel with maybe a little carafe too. Carafe, yeah. yeah. And I think the aroma next, right? Like, oh man and these are so good Ryan. yeah it's so good i know like and we can't have four winners we can only have one winner and it's got to be one to four and that and i want to get i want to just say this for all of the breweries who may be listening if you are that's really awesome um they're all freaking really really good yeah. and these are all excellent examples of pumpkin beers yeah they agreed 100 percent. i i do have a favorite that i've chosen and ryan said it best i and i think uh ryan obviously you chose some great beers on this one because the focus was on the lcbo here so i think every single beer that was chosen here exhibited a phenomenal pumpkin flavor phenomenal uh spice breakdown like it wasn't too much wasn't too little so as right. we're rating these here we're rating like what's the best of the best is essentially what this is. That's the a way this is at on it. the pump. You know, that could have been a runner here. I think but, so, yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's a bit of a toss up. Not else to be available. Oh, man. Uh, you know, dude. Wait till you try the Lake of Bays again. I know. That's what I'm going into <laughs> next. I'm like, I know it's going to be smelled wonderful this time around. thing I like about that lake of bays too is it's a darker ale right mm -hmm. and so often we get our ales that we don't get a lot of dark ales anymore it's very often you'll get very rarely you'll get a brown ale or dark red oh, ale, yeah, right man. people are scared so of this is yeah this is really nice for that reason because you're getting the you're getting the hop the ale hopped but you're getting those not darker malts that we we don't see as much in ales with the mm -hmm. high ipas and stuff these days right Mm -hmm. And you got your dark lager. Jesus, this is so hard. <laughs> no, I took a sip of How each one of them. As you're doing that. I was like, oh, like, I was like, oh, these are so. I bad. was looking at doing like I was looking at um, seeing what the BJCP certification was like. Yeah, that's gonna be hard, man. Yeah, right. Like, there's That'd a be... lot you really have to think about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, oh, would, man. that would be tough. That would be tough. Because <laughs> I'm a really big fan of this porter right now. The porter is super good, man. That porter is like the perfect end of night beer, you know, especially during these seasons. Okay. Like, I love it. We're going to rank them. All right. This is so difficult, everybody. I really suggest, like, honestly, if you like pumpkin beers, excuse me, go out, get these four. Tell us what you think. Don't drink all four in an hour. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't do that. I'm probably not going to touch any more of these after this. <laughs> <laughs> I will. <laughs> don't tell anybody. <laughs> I'll be sipping them for the rest of the night. <laughs> love it. Love it. All right. So I'm going to rank mine. I'm going to put this in front and center. All right. We're going to go. Where am I? One. Yeah two three yeah. four does that make sense is that backwards yeah no 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 that that's forward to me man that makes sense shit <laughs> this is hard i'm like trying again which one let me try this one one more all right i have to go big rig first um i think this just it they nailed it this year the porter I've always said for many, many moons um, that 
pumpkin beer should belong in a porter. And when I first had this big rig brewery beer many years ago too, it was my favorite, but then something happened with the recipe or, or whatever. There was something that happened that for a couple yeah. of years, it didn't hit the spot. Yeah. They brought it back. Yeah. What about you? Number one for you. Oh, wait, no, we shouldn't go number one. Oh, I ruined it. We're supposed to go fourth no. to last. No, right. no, 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 no. Okay, so okay, that's go your, your number one. My go your number fourth. One. Your number one? Oh, all right. Go your number one. Then we'll go four because <laughs> I don't know how to do this stuff. La- La- Lake of Bays. My, Lake of Bays. My, yeah, man. I'd never tried this one before, Ryan, and it was, I don't know, for me, I, I thought it was really nice. Like, I didn't expect something that was subtly pumpkin, subtly spicy, and just all beer. You know, mm-hmm. so, nice, so nice. I liked it. Big man, big I really big fucked big. that up. I'm supposed to go fourth to fourth to first. Oh, good, Ryan. <laughs> you can tell system. we've done this we're, before. We're redoing the system. We do one man. more. <laughs> All right. So second place. This one's tough, man. I know. Um, I gotta go with my dark lager theater. Um, you know what? And this is not even like I'm really struggling with these, like. For me, yeah. the Lake of Bays could be right there with either of these two. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. agree with you 100%. And, yeah. and like I said, having a dark ale is such a nice option. But they're also good, Ryan. They're they all so good. good. It's so hard. It, you know, like I said earlier, man, we're choosing from the best of the best here, right? Like that gets tough. I think so. And the great crazy thing is, is these are liquor store available. Like yeah. LCBO, I, I found all four of these, and this is surprising to me, you, like Friday Harbor, it's a tiny little liquor store yeah. with like mediocre at best craft selection. I actually guarantee you, <laughs> I can find a craft beer on that shelf from June of last year. That's how mediocre it is. Um, all four of these were there. I was shocked. I looked up pumpkin beer. I was like, all right, I need to get these beers ready. And I used the LCBO app, which I love. Um, and I was like, pumpkin beer. And it was like, bam, that one, bam. Say all at the same liquor stores. I was like, this is perfect. So that's too good. Yeah. These are easily available for everybody who's listening. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody can get them no matter where you are. Anywhere where you are. And if you can't yeah. find them at the liquor store, ask your liquor store to bring them in or order yes. them from the brewery. Yeah, seriously. I think well, that's one of the things, Ryan, that people don't know they can do is if enough people approach their LCBO about a certain beer or a certain brand, they can look at acquisition on that, you know. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'll I'll go into my second Number one here two. without further ado. My second one is your first place beer, which is Tales from the Patch. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That was too good, Ryan. I mean, I think that this one really stands out and I really had a difficult time between this and the Lake of Bays because it's nice to see, you know, beyond something that's a lighter beer that's got pumpkin in it and especially a porter we don't see very often with pumpkin in it. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was really nicely done, man. Super good. Pum- the pumpkin flavor yeah. was uh, again much like the the beer before, not overpowering, and this nor were the spices, just perfectly balanced. And a nice nice touch of sweet on it, which is really yeah. nice too. Yeah. Um. And it, you know, it's it's so tough, Robin. Like I'm saying here, oh like, dude, like, I know. And I'm like, I'm like, I love GLB's beers, and I'm like, fuck, I don't want to put it last if it's <laughs> last. Like it's not even that it's last, but I don't want it to be fourth. I'm like, but at the same time, like I don't know if it's fourth or not. <laughs> I think the thing for me is, is the difference between these two is nose and like, and full on body character. Like you said, like the way the malt profile crosses in that Lake of Bays. And um, I just think it complements the pumpkin spices mm-hmm. so much better. Mm-hmm. The GLB has that um, much more superior drinkability factor oh, for me. The, the crushability on that GLB one I yeah. can drink two or three of those uh, comfortably. Uh, you know, when it comes to Tales of the Patch, I can just have one of these at the end of the night. Yeah, like, so, was it Saturday afternoon? We were out putting up the Halloween decorations and I had the GLB while we were out doing it. And it was Good call. tolerable, right? Like, I think yeah. any of the other ones might have been too much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. gosh, this is so difficult. I know, dude. Let me try you again. Hold on. Yeah, like, I don't want to pick you. <laughs> Just can we just stack them all in first place? <laughs> <laughs> That's too good. Mm. Oh, I really like those caramel malts in there. 
yeah, I gotta go out, B man. <laughs> yeah, fair, man. Yeah. Fair. It's tough, fair. and like, like, it, like, I, I, man, they're so good, and that's the tough part. But I really am digging the malt factor. Yeah. In, in that one. Um, Agreed. Agreed. This one is a much more. Oh, so I can put this up because we know this is fourth now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think this one here is, like you said, it's that much more crushable. Like this is for those yeah. nice warm autumn days like yeah. you know plus 19 you want a fall tasting beer but you might want three of them that's where i would take this one but i think this one wins out just because it's scumble. it's got those that red ale notes right like uh, it's yeah. got those car- caramel flavors and mm-hmm. yeah man this has been really difficult rob and i gotta yeah, see who dude. you got third and fourth then so you got some tough choices to be made so much like you i i didn't have an easy time on this because they all are so incredible um and like so monkeys was my number three yeah that's not to take away from this beer this could be many people's number one beer this is 100 fantastic, fantastic um i thought that the body was nice the malt profile was incredible and i thought uh, as as with some of the other beers that the balance of pumpkin flavors and wall spices was nice I actually, if if I if I had to speak to spices alone, I thought the monkeys did it best. Actually, like their spice yep. profile is super super good. Uh, but I think like overall, I just would like a porter better in some time. So that way it was a hard choose. My last one, and again, not to take away from these cats at all, but my uh, last place one, I'll put up a photo here, is uh, obviously going to be GLBs, which is the one that's left over. Um, you know, not to take away from this, this is the uh, uh, October uh, after work, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, gathering all the leaves up to toss into your, your recycling bags or into your compost bags. Like, this is that kind of beer, right? I, I wouldn't yep. necessarily drink the tails of the patch at like two in the no. afternoon on Saturday. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against porters, but <laughs> that's, a, that's a later in the day beer for me. Mm-hmm. But this was a fantastic, fantastic beer. I think if anybody's not trying it for free, I'd say even maybe try that one first as your, your kind of entry into some of these pumpkin beers. That way you're not tainted by anything else out there. Yeah, totally agree. I think, um, you know, we, in pumpkin beers, there's a lot to be said about the four we got here. You know, the, yeah. the even the contrast and, and styles, we looked at the colors, like there's something for everyone in mm-hmm. these four beers, I think, that we found um you know you've got four very unique styles a lighter ale a darker ale a dark lager and a, and a porter a milk porter at that right so you you know you've got that touch of lactose in a couple of these i think the two the flying monkeys yeah. um i would like to point out that i just basically reversed the order <laughs> it was set up lighter to darker and now it's darker to lighter <laughs> And maybe that's that kind of subliminally speaking to the fact that you might want to more porters and stouts heading into the season. Right. I was literally (laughs) going to say like, maybe, you know, that's something to do with the transitional change of the beer. You know, we always say uh, with the fall fall colors, you get fall beers and you go, you always tend to drive to the darker styles and then Christmas time comes the Belgian treats. Yeah, man. But yeah, this has been fun. I, I, you know, I, I, I think LB pleasant like a base was pleasantly surprising for me. Very. I was not expecting that. Um, I, you know, like I, I enjoy their beers and they make great beers, but pumpkin beers are hit and miss and they definitely have really found a very specific notch in the pumpkin beer scale. Like they're, they're on their own with that dark yeah. ale. You're right. You're right, man. They, they, they hit the mark. It's the first time I tried that beer. Incredible job. I mean, Pumpkin, I hate to say it, Ryan, is one of those ones that like sometimes it's really easy to mess up. I've tried some of the macro stuff that's got pumpkins in it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't taste good. Yeah, it really doesn't taste good. It's really hard to dial in a lot of these ingredients like pumpkin as well as the spices. That ain't easy. Exactly. And especially with the beer, right? Like, yeah. I, you, I, you know, there's never going to be a pumpkin IPA. No, it just <laughs> wouldn't work. You got to be specific with your grain bill and what hops are using to complement and that's why i think i like the the L, like a base too is because the fuggles hop seems to really complement that style too it's got a, a little you know, more of that pepperiness to it yeah yeah big fan this has been great it has yeah. man this is wild uh, as a 
kind of heading into October, our first episode for October, we're kind of leaning in with uh, something that's very Halloween-y. We've obviously had a fantastic opportunity to take a look at your jack-o'-lanterns. So now everybody listening will be tuning into your IG rides and yeah. see what pumpkins you got coming up. Have and I think it was, yeah, look, and uh, it was, again, really wild to try such a variety of beers and, and get the opportunity to try this sort of a cross-section as well. It wasn't just all ales, all like light beers or, or just basic lagers. Some of them kind of delved into the darker beers, which was awesome. Like the uh, mm-hmm. big recorder, which actually came out on top for you. Yeah, exactly. My number one. And yeah, you know, just diving into the Halloween fun. It's it's that time of year. So why not do it with the pumpkin beer? We rhymed like that, didn't we? Here, <laughs> <laughs> Love we're it. gonna keep going. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm done with the rhyming. But uh, yeah, I I, I think uh, you know. I would love to hear what people think. If you listen to the show, um, you know, shoot us a message and tell us what you think of these beers. Um, what's your favorite pumpkin beer? Why do you hate pumpkin beer? Um, you know, I'd love to love to hear from everybody. So we're going well, when we post this as well, you know, feel free to comment and let us know what you think about the beers we've chosen. Um, grab all four from your liquor store and drink along with us while we're on YouTube and tell us how you would rank these beers because we'd love to see what everybody thinks. Um, it, it's just, a, it's a fun way to enjoy beer. Um, you don't, you know, this is something I think we should maybe look at adding in, uh, once a quarter, maybe is like a, a style ranking. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That'd be super fun. Call it Mr. Rankings. <laughs> and away we go. Um, so next week we're off cause it's Thanksgiving. And though I don't really approve of the concept of Thanksgiving, we yeah, do I mean, get together. Well, use it dinner. as a day of observation, right, Ryan? I think that's one thing everybody can do next week is let's just kind of sit back and use that as a day of observation. Explain to everybody that's got kids, explain to your children what yep. really kind of took place on that day and the reality of the situation. I've got a challenge for everybody. Instead of prayers before dinner, toss out your land acknowledgement and throw your family for a loop. Good idea, brother. That's what I'm doing. I think that's a good idea. I so like you, that. I'm with instead Ryan. Instead of grace, yeah. send your land acknowledgement. You don't yeah. know what your land acknowledgement is for your yeah. area. Google land acknowledgement for my city. Yeah, um, very easy to find. Very easy. Yeah, very easy to find. I know that mm-hmm. I acknowledge I live on the land that are traditionally from the Anishinaabe church. <sighs> I can't say it right now. Anishinaabe. Thank you. And we need to know these things. So I think it's a good challenge. Um, and it really might throw old Uncle Frank for a fucking loop too. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, it's good. It will throw Uncle Frank for a loop because they'll probably be asking you questions afterwards, which will help exactly. educate Exactly. <laughs> yes. I, I think it's a great idea. Use it to understand, yeah. you know, why we shouldn't celebrate Thanksgiving. Teach your children, teach your family, teach your friends. Nice. Um, and have some pumpkin beers. Hell yeah. Yeah. And then what do we got? October 17th, Robin and I are flying to, which means we're driving to, uh, (laughs) Flying Monkeys. So we're going to sit down with Andrea and Peter Chiodo and talk all about one of our favorite breweries. Um, I am like kind of giddy for this one. (laughs) Same goes, dude. Same goes, man. Come on. They were like... One of those big, after I got into craft, I fell in love with monkeys. I was like, oh yes, my God, look at all these West Coast uh, uh, and East Coast IPAs that I've never tried before. Let me jump into these. Like, oh my your, God. Your bottle cap collection was unrivaled, I would think. I had, at one point, I probably had well over, I want to say 200, 300 different bottle caps of monkeys. And I yeah. had like 80 out of 116, I think, that they that they completely released. Yeah. That's funny. Seeing that, I can't wait to ask them questions about that and, and the, you know, the <laughs> great too. history they have and, and the great beers they're doing. Cider, or, uh, not Cider's the uh, Infinite Mind yeah. Seltzer yeah. Series. Yeah. So it'll be great to sit down with them. And then on October 25th, we got Traveling Pint at Tiffany is joining us for the Watch all- that one on YouTube. We're going to be dressed up. Watch that one on YouTube. Absolutely. Listen to it too while Absolutely. you're dressed up. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be fun. That's like an all out. We're going to talk to Tiffany and learn all about her venture into craft beer. Um, you know, her love of the beer, her love of Halloween and, and just all things, Halloween, horror movies, favorite, scary monster, you know, it's going to be a fun episode. I'm excited. I'm going to dress up just a little and, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll have some fun and I'll have some fresh pumpkins that I have carved. 
sitting here live beside me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that evil laugh. <laughs> like I'm holding mine right now. I will. What I'll do is we'll make sure instead of the green screen, we'll have my carved pumpkins this year for that episode. Yeah, man. I'll do two. You know what? I'm going to do this up a Four Elements podcast pumpkin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, that's right. Oh. <laughs> we the best music. Oh, wait, no, wrong thing entirely. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Khaled. Sorry, Khaled. I will give you the $100,000 next millennia. <laughs> oh, man. Too good. Too good. I, on that note, I guess we should probably say goodbye. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll chat next week, anyways, you and Absolutely. I. But a huge thank you to everybody for listening. Um, hate them or love them. Pumpkin beers are here to stay. So you might as well enjoy them anyway. Definitely enjoy him. Cheers, brother. Cheers, bro.